Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode here on African Confessions. The following message that you're going to be listening to, it was sent to me by one of our dear sister and this is the translation of that message that she sent to me. The translation, it reads like this. Hello brother Nashi, how are you? Can you please post my own story as hidden identity? My brother, I am trying by all means to become a very strong uh, Christian but there are things that happened in the past and these things they make me not to tell my husband not to inform him because of the things that i did in the past so me and my husband we met each other here in south africa and at that time i was sleeping around and my husband he was the one who made me to turn my life around and to become a christian that i am right now so i am scared that if i tell my husband that i met this rich blesser who did these things to me then my husband is going to say you are a liar you are a liar already you had been dating this guy so the way that i met this rich blesser is i knock off at four usually i knock off at 4 p.m so i then i will then go to church because each and every day it's our church that is this evening service that usually finishes up at around 7 p.m or 8 p.m so i will just go there from 5 then i would pray until 6 p.m then i would rush back home because my husband he usually comes back home at around 10 p.m he will be dropped by his boss because he's working in the construction industry so the boss will just drop him in the location him and the other guys that are working for for this white man so i would rush back home so that i can quickly prepare a meal for my husband and water to bath for him and then there was this other day when i had gone to church as per usual then there was this other day after work i went straight to church so when i went to church i saw that there was a deliverance service that was taking place i then texted my husband and i said is it okay if i if he can allow me to stay at church until when we would have knocked off from church since we had been told that there was going to be transport my husband then said it was okay but it then happened that the church elder the one who stays close to our location since he is a doctor he was then called at the hospital where he is working so, so when the announcement was made that the elder had been called to the hospital and he had to go and all the people that were supposed to be accompanied by him after the church service we had to make other plans i did not have any money on me even though some people had said that we should do a bolt so i said let me start walking and since it was still somewhere around past six i then started walking so when i was walking that was when i met this other man he stopped his car and when he stopped his car i quickly looked before i jumped in into his car and i saw that there were two women that were sitting at the back i looked back and i saw that there was one woman who actually had a little baby that she was breastfeeding so i felt like really safe but when i look when i turned around i greeted those two women that were sitting at the back but those women surprisingly they didn't even speak with me the man then started to drive and when he was driving he spoke with me and i realized that this man he was also from zim and this man when we started to talk he asked me a lot of questions and i told him that i was returning back from church and he was like are you not scared i don't know it was like there was uh, this thing that told me to turn around and look at the back seat when i turned around when i looked at the back seat by that time when i was trying to gather my thoughts and to understand what was going on because i had seen that at the back seat that woman who i had seen that she was holding a baby and she was busy breastfeeding her baby i looked and i saw that this woman she was actually breastfeeding a snake brother i screamed out loud but when i screamed out loud that rich blesser i then found out that he had placed his hand on my thighs and the moment that he placed his hands on my thighs i felt good so much good that i told him to park his car by the side of the road he looked at me and he smiled and my heart it was really beating fast against my chest 
when i looked back i then saw that those two women had disappeared i asked him where were these women that i had seen earlier on when i had gotten into his car he said which women it was only i so he parked the car by the side of the road then we tried to make love but unfortunately there were a lot of cars that were passing by he then drove into the bushes and he parked at a spot where there was no cars that were passing and it was really quiet he then took me and he made me to sit on his lap that is how me and him made love and after we had made love this man he then gave me 300 us dollars so after he had given me 300 us dollars he then started to drive and by the time that i thought of checking my phone to my surprise it was 11 p.m and this man when he picked me up it was somewhere just around 7 30 that was when he had picked me up so i do not know what exactly happened from the time that he picked me up to the time that we went and we packed into the bushes until i realized that it was 11 p.m when i i then told this rich blesser and i said please take me back home because i kept on thinking about my husband and i was really nervous and there were a lot of missed calls and this is the reason as to why i am scared to tell my husband everything that happened because in the past i cheated on him but he never found out that i had cheated on him this was the time when i started to go to church with him and when we were at church there was a man who approached me and this man he just grabbed me in a nice way when no one was looking and this made me to feel a lot of things for that man and i slept with that man but my husband never found out and i can say that after sleeping with that man that was when i made that decision to never cheat on my husband again until i came across that blesser so i told that blesser to take me home he gave me his phone numbers so the time that i was dropping so the time that we entered so when we got into the location where me and my husband are staying i then told him to stop his car because i thought that maybe my husband might be going around the location looking for me so i got out of the vehicle and he reminded me to take the 300 us dollars to my i got out of the car that was when he reminded me brother nashi this man he had given me six thousand rands earlier on and I, I knew that this money i had placed it in my small handbag that i was carrying but when i stepped out of his vehicle to my surprise he then told me that oh you have forgotten your money and i saw that this money it was on that same passenger seat that i had been sitting on all along so i then started to pick up that money and then i saw that one of the 200 notes it then changed itself and it became a snake so i screamed when i screamed out loud this man he then started driving with even with the door still opened like that since i was still counting the money but this man he just drove with his door open like that until he stopped when he was far off from the place where he had left me standing and he quickly closed the door the way that he started driving he was driving really fast trying to get away from me as fast as he could and when i saw that this is what had happened i then decided to throw away the money so i was like this is really strange and what is my husband going to say when he finds out that i have all of this money so i threw the money away then i saw that i had forgotten my phone in that blesses car and i don't know how am i supposed to be in communication with him so when i arrived back home the next morning since my husband is the first one to go to work when i was busy preparing i was looking for my passport because i had heard some ladies were saying that there was a roadblock so i wanted to carry my passport with me when i found my passport to my surprise the money that i had thrown away the previous night it was there six thousand rands was there in my handbag my brother i took that money and i did not go to work on that day i went straight to pep and i bought the same phone the same phone that my husband had bought for me because i was scared that my husband was going to realize that i did not have the phone the phone anymore and he was going to ask me a lot of questions so i bought that phone and i had to drop it i dropped it down so that the screen can get cracked just a little bit and then i bought the same pouch that i had on my 
previous phone, the one that I, f I had forgotten in that blesses phone. So that is what I did to cover it up because I do not want my husband to know that I, when I got picked up by that blesser, I ended up sleeping with that blesser who gave me money. This money, Brother Nashi, I still have it. Even though I bought a phone which was for 3,000 rands, I bought that phone. And when I looked in my handbag again, I saw that the money, it was there. It was as if I just went to Pep to get a phone for free. But I paid that phone for cash. <sighs> dear listeners, right there was a message that was sent to me by our dear sister. So when I spoke with our dear sister, I said, can't you do a SIM swap? She said, the problem is that the SIM card, this SIM card, I just got it from those people that sell the SIM cards that are already registered. So when I tried to do a SIM swap, I could not do that because I do not have the details. I am not the one who registered that SIM card. I don't even know who registered that SIM card. And she was like, I have seen that this is the disadvantage of just going and buying a SIM card that is already registered. Because if only I could maybe get a SIM swap, then I will be able to get maybe the phone numbers of this blesser. That is the message that she sent to me. Strange things do happen in this world.